I'm here at HP Discover and I'm joined by Brett and we're going to have a quick chat about persistent memory. I believe there's been some announcements at Discover. Could you quickly run us through those and just sort of give us some use cases? What those people that haven't worked with or familiar with persistent mm -hmm. memory, what's it all about and when would we use it? Okay, yeah, let me, let me just kind of start out with a quick overview. So persistent memory is a product category that describes uh, things that run on the memory bus but are used for storage. Okay. So uh, if we, we kind of reflect back in our current generation of servers, our ProLiant Gen 9, we announced the first product in the category, which is the 8 gig NVDIM. Okay. Now, an NVDIM, a simple way to think of an NVDIM, is it's a memory uh, device backed by flash, sure. used for storage. So it's the fastest tier of storage on a ProLiant server. Very good for small uh, storage bottlenecks. Think of things like uh, transaction logs, yep. where there's a lot of latency that happens writing to uh, block storage devices. Now you could write to DRAM and get memory DRAM level performance and actually uh, vastly increase the speed of your uh, of your application. Now, okay, in the Gen 9, what was right. the scale of that? How large could you scale with NV DIMMs? NV DIMMs in Gen 9 were uh, you had 8 gigs, so sure. you could do up to 16, so about 128 gigs okay. of capacity. So you were only going to really tackle the smaller uh, storage bottlenecks. Yes. Now. What's new in Gen 10? We just announced our new HPE Scalable Persistent Memory, okay? Uh, what is that? It is now up to uh, a terabyte of DRAM level performance, right? Okay. So what we did, we took, we said, hey, we will use the existing memory that's on the memory bus, and through software means, we make a portion of the DRAM and mark it as Scalable Persistent Memory, so up to a terabyte. We have a tier of flash that's dedicated as a backup because as you know, DRAM, uh, when you lose power data that's on DRAM, uh, needs to go to a more permanent storage area. And then we have a battery backup capability that uh, facilitates moving data from DRAM to flash. Okay. And is there any kind of special DRAM that's needed, or is it just standard stuff you put in your Gen 10 servers? It's the uh, uh, the smart memory that you use in the Gen 10 server. Yep. And uh, so if you start thinking about up to a terabyte, what kind of use cases are you going to enable? Larger in-memory compute with persistence. In-memory compute is not new. That's how memory works today. In-memory compute with persistence now really opens up the capability to do larger things like a, an entire database in memory. Sure. Think of a Microsoft SQL uh, server Hecaton in memory database. Um, another good use case is what we call checkpoints. Checkpoints are any application that runs in memory periodically has to save off to a uh, non-volatile source, right? That's typically a, a, an area of latency uh, that our customers have. So what we do is we say, what, what if you're now checkpointing to DRAM? The DRAM that's uh, used by scalable persistent memory, now instead of doing, uh, you actually vastly uh, improve the performance of your database and make it more predictable. Okay. Um, and so you have uh, much better performance by using DRAM level uh, media versus uh, your you know, block storage media that you use in the past. Are there any kind of numbers you could put around that versus uh, you know keeping a database on flash versus keeping it on persistent memory? Yeah, we've got a couple of uh, quants that you know. One of the examples is the uh, Microsoft SQL Server 2016. Uh, we did a test of putting the transaction log. Uh, the portion of the transaction log where the most recent writes are coming in, and we did a comparison of doing that on a very fast write intensive NVMe versus a uh, NVDIM, and we found that it was doubling of performance and okay. cutting the latency in half right. using a single 8 gig NVDIM. So that's an NVDIM example. With our um, scalable persistent memory, uh, we looked at things like doing, you know, a SQL Hecaton restart. We had a 200 gig SQL Hecaton in memory database, and we stopped the database and we did a restart using SAS SSDs. It took us 20 minutes uh, to get things back up and running, so very respectable. Uh, then we took it down again and we said, okay, we're going to do a restart with scalable persistent memory. Okay. The restart went from 20 minutes to 45 seconds. Okay. Sure. So, wow. uh, and then uh, kind of the last one that we we'll use uh, that I like to talk about is the. Uh, you know, just, you know, the restore capability, right? So you're restoring from a tier of DRAM um, backed by flash as opposed to other uh, storage media, okay. slower block storage media. So you can get, you know, anywhere 13X, 20X. We actually have an example of a checkpoint uh, speeding up as fast as 27X using uh, a MySQL database in a uh, Docker container. 
Okay, thanks very much for your time. I think this is a really exciting area and it's going to be interesting to see how it develops in the future. Yes, thank you very much. Thanks, thank you very much. Thank you.